evening to those of you who have joined this session. We're so excited to get started. My name is Rachel Ferreira and I'm an assistant director here in the MIT Sloan Admissions Office. Today, the purpose of this information session is to go through um, and give everyone an overview of our MBA program and we will have time to answer questions. So as you're listening, as we're going through some of the, this information, please plan to use the Q&A feature. Some of um, my colleagues are behind the scenes right now and will be answering questions using that feature Q&A. And we will also have an opportunity to answer many of the questions live. So please, as you're listening, if you have more detailed questions, if you have anything that you're wondering about, please send those through using our Q&A feature. Thank you again for joining us. So we, we want to just start by welcoming you. We're excited to talk to you today about our MBA program. MIT Sloan is a mission driven. Um, and so the mission of, of the MIT School, Sloan School of Management is to develop principled, innovative leaders who improve the world and to generate ideas that advance management practice. So as we build the curriculum, as we talk to prospective students and work with current students, this is something that's all always in the back of our minds and something that is part of everything that is done at MIT Sloan. This is an overview of all of our programs here. So our portfolio of programs have really expanded. So today, what we're talking about is our, our MBA program, our traditional two-year program. And on average, our students are coming into that program with three to seven years of experience. Um, we, we won't talk as much about LGO as those deadlines have passed, but if anyone is on this call interested in LGO, what that is is it's a dual program that combines our MBA program with a degree, in, a master's degree in engineering. So in the future, if you're interested in more information about the LGO, we will continue to have more more detailed information sessions that focus on that. Um, but at this stage of the process, LGO applicants are waiting until next year. So our focus today is going to be our MBA program, but you can see here with our portfolio of programs that while you're at Sloan, you're exposed to a lot of different courses and curriculum, and then you are also in classes with different students that are parts of these different programs. We have our MBA early program, which is for students. If there's anyone on this call today who are current seniors in their bachelor's degree or in a finishing up a master's degree, it's an opportunity for students to apply to the MBA program while finishing up school and then work for a minimum of two years and enter the MBA program at that time. We do have more information available for this MBA early program, and the deadline is coming up in April. So if there are any current students on this call, that's something that you may want to look into. Our business analytics program and our master's of finance program um, are currently, um, deadlines have passed, but we're in the interview stages of those programs. Our Sloan Fellows and our EMBA, EMBA programs are for um, experienced professional that professionals that have anywhere from 10 to 25 years of experience. So as I said today, we're focusing on our MBA program and it's a traditional two-year program and people that are entering this program have anywhere from three to seven years experience about. So as you're starting to, to look into your options and you may ask yourself this question already, why an MIT Sloan MBA? So we're gonna talk about a few of these details about you know, what makes the MBA program here at MIT Sloan special. The first thing is the highly flexible curriculum and I'll explain some of those details in a moment, but really MIT Sloan believes in choosing your own adventure and having the opportunity to focus in areas that either you're filling a skill gap or you're very interested in finding ways to make sure that you're getting a very dynamic education throughout the two years. So the highly, highly flexible curriculum is really important to us. We have built in innovative hands-on learning opportunities. And so this isn't a program where you would sit and learn the foundation, um, though we do have a core class core set of classes where you're going to get foundational knowledge, but the majority of your experience is finding ways to apply the knowledge that you're learning to solve current problems and to really dive into hands-on application of all that you're learning in the classroom. The MIT overall experience, what do you get out of being here at MIT? We're going to touch on some of those details. And, you know, 
as many of you are here thinking about your future long-term goals, we'll talk a little bit about the rewarding um, careers that our students are entering into and some of the support you have while at MIT to make sure that you're reaching those goals. So to talk a little more in more in depth about our flexible curriculum, the first semester core is something that all of our MBA students start with. And so what you can expect is as you enter an M the MBA program, everyone in the MBA class starts together. You would take classes like economic analysis for business decisions, data modeling and decisions, communication for leaders, organizational processes and financial accounting. It's a way for you to get to know your peers and to work together. And it's also a way for you to really start hit the ground running with information that brings everyone on the same page. Everyone in the MBA class is different and is coming with different levels of experience, different types of experience, different industry knowledge. And so this core semester really will be able to get all of our students on the same page and start with some of this foundation. The um, core teams are something that are is really important to the MBA program. And so as you get started, you'll be immediately paired with a core team. And so that core team moves through all of your first semester classes with you. And so you really get to know each other. But the other part of this is that it's a very dynamic team. So you most likely would not be paired with anyone who has a similar background as you do. And that's industry wise, location wise, all the rest of it. So it's going to be an extremely diverse team to help you sort of get familiar with what you're learning, but also start the ground, you know, hit the ground running with different perspectives. After the core semester, you move into your second semester and you have sort of what seems like an endless amount of options for your electives. So you can choose over 215 Sloan electives. You can also cross register three of your courses in the larger MIT ecosystem or at Harvard. As you're thinking about your future goals, we also offer three tracks. So within your MBA program, you could study for enterprise management, entrepreneurship and innovation, as well as finance. On top of that, we have four certificate opportunities and that covers business analytics, digital product management, healthcare and sustainability. Within your two year MBA, you have the choice to either keep this an open adventure where you select all the electives you're interested in or you can focus your MBA just slightly using a track or certificate if there's something very specific that you're looking to accomplish during your two-year MBA. We also have 15 um, over 15 action learning labs and we'll get into what that means in just a little while but as we were talking about the first semester core getting you ready these action learning labs give you a chance to work for businesses and business professionals to help solve current problems. And so, you know, as much as the foundational knowledge is important, it really is important to start practicing and learning um, how to solve current problems and to use your diverse team to hear different perspectives. And so that's built into the curriculum as well. <clears throat> so a little more about this. As I said at the beginning, we are a mission driven school and so mind in hand is something that's always in the back of our minds here at MIT and how do we make sure that our students are graduating with the ability to solve problems and so here are a few more opportunities that exist here. So action learning labs, as I mentioned, are classes where you learn by doing you are able to work with a company and a business professional to solve. Uh, some type of problem. So for example, if you are interested in receiving your MBA and you you would like to focus on finance, we have a finance lab. So every project that's presented in that class is related to finance. Um, we have sustainability lab, for example, for those of you who are thinking about sustainable business pra practices in the future, there's a way to select a lab that's very relevant to your interests as well as what you're hoping to get out of it. In addition to these action learning labs, we have an independent activities period. This just ended here, so it's during the month of January, and all MIT, 
NFT students are free to explore independent projects, take part in new activities. So it's a chance to step away from your traditional curriculum that you've now been sitting in classes and to focus on something of interest and something unique. Um, and so it's a really exciting opportunity to, again, bring your interests and your passions into the curriculum. In addition, we have the Sloan Intensive Period. So SIP occurs at the midpoint of each semester and offers students experiential leadership training and timely management topics. So recently what the SIP focus was on is you know, the complexity of leading in inclusive um, business settings and how do we understand all of the dynamics at play. And so that was part of what our students were able to experience during that Sloan intensive period. This just touches on the overall MIT experience. What does MIT have to offer? So you can see here a couple of things that I'll mention. Um, we have 80, over 85 entrepreneurship resources, grants, and competitions for the entrepreneurs out there who are thinking about expanding their network and their opportunities with an MBA. We also have more than 20 student-led industry conferences. And so our students themselves are planning industry conferences, bringing in speakers, um, providing a resource of, of information to our community and others. And so it's a, it's a professional way to get involved, but also again, to focus on something you're, you're interested in. I mentioned our, our you know, endless op options when it comes to electives and so over 215 within the Sloan electives but just remember that that is also not limited um, because you can cross register in the broader MIT community as well as Harvard. The MBA, the two-year MBA experience, it, we do ask students to be full-time students and part of the reason for that is due to how much we have going on on campus. And so we have over 70 Sloan student clubs. Um, there are over 500 MIT clubs, organizations. And so really we want our students to get this immersive experience to get to experience not just the classes and the curriculum, but also the opportunities that are outside of the classroom. That includes our research centers and research initiatives that many of our graduate students get involved with during their time at MIT. And of course, and not least, our alumni network is expansive and you know touches all types of all industries and business as well as you know all geographic regions. And so um, it's also an opportunity to become a part of this giant MIT alumni network um, and be able to familiarize yourself with so many different types of professionals. So of course, you know, as many of you are considering your MBA here at MIT, the question comes with, you know, what are we thinking for the future? What happens after graduating with an MBA? So a couple of notes about this. The MIT support really is meant to be there for you um, all throughout this process, um, including after your degree. So that's just something to consider. Um, as, you're, as you arrive, you are paired with your career advisor, and so you have a career core and you have one-on-one -on -one career advising. And so this is a, an opportunity for MIT to get to know each of our MBA students in a holistic way. It's an opportunity for your advisor to understand you, what you're looking for, and it is more than just what position do you hope to find yourself in. It really is the type of lifestyle you want to lead, the location you want to be in. There's there are a lot of questions in the in the initial intake to really get to know you as a person and to understand what your future goals are. Also, something to keep in mind is your career advisors will have industry experience, and so that's an exciting thing to know that those advisors are, you know, well versed in the industry you're interested in, as well as how to help you best during during the recruitment season. We do have industry and affinity communities. And so as soon as our students arrive, they are able to start to tap into these communities to really get some advice from from current students, um, as well as alumni and how to best represent yourself, interview support, resume support, all those types of things. There will also be in-person and virtual resources. So as things have, have started to settle down a bit, we have resumed in-person recruiting opportunities on campus as well. Um, and then of course, 
you know, technology like this allows for vir virtual meetups and different types of things, depending on industry and interest. There will also be a ton of events and networking opportunities throughout your two year MBA. Um, you know, always an opportunity to meet more people, to introduce yourself, to find you know, people with like minds who are interested in similar things. That is part of the experience here at, at MIT Sloan. Okay, so I wanted to get over to questions, but just a few things before we get there. Um, something to think about, um, you know, we are getting towards the end of our of our application cycles for our MBA program. Our round three deadline is April 11th. And so as you're thinking about what the next steps are for you and you're getting prepared for your application, that is the, the last deadline for our MBA program for this cycle. And then for any of you who are on the call who are really forward thinking and you're thinking about applying next year, what you can expect is something very similar. So our round one deadline um, will also take place in 2023 towards the end of September. Um, and the same thing for round two, you can expect mid-January in 2024 and the same for round three. So for any of you future planners out there, we will release these dates mid-summer, um, end of July or early August. Um, but just something to think about, you can expect something very similar and the same with these LGO dates. Okay, so we will get into answering some questions about our application. For those of you who started it, you probably noticed this, but here are the MBA application components. So we'll need your academic transcripts, a resume, a cover letter, an organizational chart, which we will definitely talk more about, a one minute video. The video is having you introduce yourself to your future fellow classmates, and we will talk more about that. One letter of recommendation, we do ask for two additional references. And so that's, a, you know, people that can give us a, a sort of an account of what type of, of work you do, of, of how you handle your day-to-day -day work and your interactions. We don't always use those references, but it, it gives us a chance that if there are any outstanding questions, we can call and ask. We have an optional short answer question, which gives you a little bit of space to talk about who you are. Um, it's open-ended and it really is an opportunity to just give us a different sort of dynamic perspective of who each of our applicants are. And then we also have the GMAT and GRE scores. For this year, we do have a test waiver for those of you who are still being impacted by the pandemic where test centers are still closed, we do have a test waiver that you can write in. Um, and if those are approved, that will be um, communicated to you directly. Just something to note about this. We don't know that this will still, um, the waiver option will happen for next year. And so we will find out this, that this summer. Um, so, so don't predict you know, that we would have a test waiver if you're thinking about applying next year, that decision has not not been made. Once we do review all of your application materials, we invite each candidate um, to an interview round. And so at this point, if you are invited to an interview, it is required and it's invitation only, and it's a 30 minute behavioral interview, which I can answer more questions about what that interview looks like um, in just a moment. And here are just some of the stats of our class of 2024 as you're thinking about what it looks like, um, what it would be like to join in, in the MBA class here at MIT. It is a class size of 408, 408, and that includes our LGO. So what you can expect is around 350 MBA students, 46% women, 40% international students. We, on average, are seeing around five years work experience, and we do have a minimum of two years. And so we are looking for candidates that have 24 months full-time work experience or more. 63 countries are represented, and our median GPA is a 3.59. So as you're thinking about this, I know I'm sure we're already getting questions about, you know, what does our ideal student look like? You can see that a lot of background undergraduate majors as well as pre-MBA industries represented here. So there is not one type of student that makes a perfect MBA student. Okay, great. So I am going to jump right into our questions so I can answer a few of these. 
Let me see here. Okay, so the first question here is in regards to the GMAT or GRE score. So I'll say a couple of things about this. The first thing is we do not have a minimum GMAT or GRE question. Um, uh, I'm sorry, let me say that again. We do not have a minimum GMAT or GRE score. So what that means is that our admissions committee is looking for students who can show that they are ready and can do this work, but it's not done in one particular way. So for any students that might be concerned about their GMAT or GRE score, there are other ways to show your quant readiness, whether that's your transcript and previous classes you've taken. We do have students that take additional Coursera classes, MBA math, and things of that nature to show their quant readiness. We also have students that are in highly quantitative roles before entering the MBA. And so that's, an, that's another way to show your quant abilities. So as you're thinking about yourself and how you are telling your story in your application, it's something to keep in mind that we aren't looking for specifically one number or one type of student and you can show us your abilities in a lot of different ways. Okay, another question I'm seeing here is, will your application to the MBA be, be disadvantaged if you have less than three years of working experience? And the answer is no. We do require two years of experience and that's the minimum. Um, and so we are seeing many applications with three years of experience. We are looking for experience that shows us um, your abilities and shows us what you're capable of doing, but you're not at a disadvantage based on um, the number of years of experience. Um, this is a great question. There's a question here that's about the culture. So what are some qualities and values the students and faculty share in the community? It's a great question. So we're just stepping outside of our, our details of application. And as you're thinking about the community itself, I think the what you'd find very often is how humble the MIT students are. So you might be having a conversation with someone and after they walk away, someone else would say, do you know who that is? Do you know what type of work they're doing? Um, so our students are not necessarily the ones to be braggadocious or tell you all of their accomplishments. It is a true collaborative environment. And so though it is a competitive program, our students are not competing with one another and they're competing against problems that they're facing and really have to use each other to solve those problems. I also think that for the most part, as you as I mentioned at the beginning, we are a mission driven school. And so what you can expect to find here at MIT Sloan is are people who are mission driven, who are trying to have an impact in whatever industry that they're in um, and have a positive impact. So I think that's another value that our community shares with one another. Um, a question about LGO, about full-time work experience, that one is a little different. We are looking for closer to three years minimum um, when we're talking about LGO work experience. It's not a, you know, a, it's not necessarily something that that would deter us from reviewing your application. And so there is a section in the application to explain a little bit about why are you applying now? So just make sure you distinguish that. If you have anything you want to explain about your academic or your work experience, you can certainly do that. There are sections in the application that allows that. Just give me one second here. I am just look, looking through our questions. Um, do you have to choose a track? So I mentioned our, our curriculum. Let me see if I can go back to this page. Give me one second here. Okay, so though I mentioned the tracks and certificates, those are not required as part of our MBA program. And so the, what you can think of as you're, as you're planning this two-year MBA program is that you would have uh, the core semester is required. These classes are selected for you. And then after that, it is up to you in how you work your curriculum. So we don't have, we have plenty of students who decide not to choose a track or certificate and they use the free electives to fill their schedule. And then we do have some students that decide to concentrate their MBA in a specific area, but it's not required. On that same note, um, are people able to pursue multiple tracks and certifications during the MBA program? 
Yep, that's a great question as well. And so the way that we we think about this is a track could be comparable to a major and a certificate could be comparable to a minor. And so though we do have students that might decide they would like to take a track and a certificate, um, we would definitely say that two tracks would be pretty heavy and is not very common. Um, you can work with your academic advisor as soon as you arrive based on your interests, and we can find a way to make it work for you. Um, but we would definitely recommend that you do still keep some free electives as an option for you. Just look through here. Okay, a question about our extended round two deadline. And so, so many of you on this call, if you had been impacted by the recent layoffs, MIT did extend our round two deadline to give, give candidates more time to get their application together if they were recently impacted by this. Um, we are looking at this pool exactly the same as our round two MBA students. Um, so it's not more competitive or less competitive than the rest of our rounds. We're sweeping it into our round two round. Um, so it the, the criteria is the same. Your application will be considered exactly the same as any of our other rounds. It just was meant to give people a little more time. Um, in terms of the differences of rounds, just to, to specify a little bit, our, round, our rounds one, two, and three are looked at, like I said, exactly the same. Um, but the only difference is at this stage of round three that some of our MBA seats have already been offered to other candidates. So what it means is that there are less seats available, but typically there are also less applicants in round three. Um, so you can, you can definitely consider that it would be the same you know, criteria that our admissions committee is looking for. Um, but I do think that just like all of our appli applications, what we're looking for is evidence that you're able to do the work here at MIT Sloan, um, that we can see some of uh, some examples of your professional work. Um, and so really, I think a piece of this is choosing your uh, recommender very strategically. So we're not necessarily looking for the highest person in your company. We are definitely not expecting to see an MIT alum, alumni name there listed, but we're looking for someone who works with you on a regular basis, who can give us examples of the work that you're doing and of your successes. So just something to think about in terms of how you stand out as a, as a candidate it, we are looking for detailed examples of, of your successes. Um, here is a question about how many action learning labs you're able to take. So our action learning labs are part of our curriculum and you sign up for those action learning labs just like you would sign up for a class. So if the if that lab does fit into your curriculum, you'd have the opportunity to register for that class. Um, you can take more than one. We have had students take more than one action learning lab. So it's it's up to you. And if you are interested in that, just letting your advisor know as soon as possible um, so they can help make sure that those things would would fit into your schedule. Um, I see a question here about any students coming to us with sort of a non-traditional background that maybe have taken less quantitative courses in their academic life. Um, so I would say a few things about this. Um, the first is that's not a requirement, though we do have students that might take MBA math, for example, or take some Coursera classes to show their capabilities in the quantitative ways. Um, you know, we do have students that sometimes are, we would recommend that they take the, an MBA math class. Um, and so that's how that process usually works. It's not a requirement, but we do see students either taking MBA math as part of their application process or after they're admitted before they enter the MBA program. I see a great question here about, you know, start if you're starting from scratch, what would be your first focus to get the most out of your MBA program? Of course, everyone's looking to get different things out of this, but I was sitting on a panel recently of alumni and what their recommendation was is that you you really take a step back and you create an outline of the types of skills, the types of experiences that you want to get from your MBA before you start. 
our offerings are endless and expansive. And so essentially you're going to have to say no to some things. It's like ordering on a huge menu at a restaurant. It's, it can be overwhelming and it can feel like all choices are you're leaving another choice that may have been great. But I think with a, a starting outline of, of some of those skills and experiences you would like to get from the program is a, a way to help you make those decisions of what types of experiences you'd like to have, what classes and things like that to sort of keep you a little bit um, in line with what your future goals are. Okay, I see another question here about your title, your current title during the application process. So the title itself that you hold is less important than some of the work that you're doing. What our admissions committee is looking for is impactful work. We, we definitely admit people who are individual contributors and we do admit people with more management experience. So I think that, you know, what you should expect is that we are looking for more detail about the type of work you're doing, how you interact with others, how you work on teams. And, you know, going back to this slide that's still up is how important working in a team is part of this MBA experience. And so, so those are the types of skills that we're looking for. And it's less important than the specific title that you're, that you're working under. Um, and so that's just sort of a little bit more about that. I see some questions here about scholarships and some opportunities there. So just a few notes about that. If you are currently in the application process, there is a section of our application that asks if you'd like to be considered for fellowship. So please definitely mark that as yes, so our admissions committee can consider your application for fellowship. We have a number of fellowships that are available for our students. Once our students receive an acceptance letter, they would also at that time be notified about their fellowship. From there, those students do work with our with our student funding office to make sure that they have what they need and can explore any other options that exist for helping to fund the MBA. I see a question here about MicroMasters. Are they helpful in the application? Um, I do think that showing any work that is graded is always going to be helpful towards showing what you're doing. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, any of those classes can be used or transferred into our MBA. Our MBA does not take any transfer credits, so you would still start with the core and you would still move through all two years of the program. We do have students that might have some of those courses under their belt already, but just something to consider. I'm sorry, give me one minute, just looking for some extra questions here. There are some more questions here about um, what do we weigh, um, what components of the application weigh the most. So I'm going to just move back to this slide to go back to our evaluation process here. Okay, so as you're looking at this list, something to consider. Our admissions committee is looking for the, the full picture of who our candidates are. And so it's not something where we're looking necessarily at one thing weighing over another thing. So, for example, our academic, the academic transcripts and seeing what you've accomplished academically is important to us. However, there is a section in our academic portion of our application where you can explain what happened. Um, you know, life is not a straight line. Things come up, things happen. And so you can explain if there's a grade or if there's something you want us to particularly know about. There is a section to do that. Um, our 
uh, optional short answer question is also oftentimes used to tell a story about, you know, what motivates you about your family background, um, about, you know, a challenge that you faced in your life. So it can be used in a number of ways. It really is open-ended. There's nothing about that that is required, however. And so if you're wondering, do I, should I fill this out? Do I have to? You don't. It just gives some more real estate for you to explain more about who you are. In addition to that, the one minute video. So I know this can be stressful for our candidates. It really is something that our admissions committee enjoys seeing. And so the, the bigger picture of the video is that it gives your application a voice. It, it gives your application your voice. And so you can do this in a number of ways. For the majority of our candidates, they're sitting at a desk recording themselves just as I'm talking to you all right now. So we're not looking for high production value. We're not looking for editing at, of any kind. We're just looking to hear a little more from you. We do have some people that like to go to their favorite places or will be out and about in while recording their video, which is wonderful. Just a few things to keep in mind with that format is that, you know, we, we definitely most importantly want to hear you. So if there is traffic driving by or it's at the top of a mountain that you hiked, that's great. But if the wind is, is if it's very windy and we can't hear you, then we lose a little bit of that. So just most importantly, that it's you, that it's your voice and that the admissions committee can hear the video. So I would say that those two, the optional short answer question as well as the video really just add sort of a voice and a personality to the written portions of the application. Sorry, thank you so much for being here. I'm just scrolling through our questions to make sure I can answer all of these. There are some entrepreneurs who have joined us, so welcome and thank you for your questions. When we're talking about resources for anyone who's an entrepreneur who has an idea or has already started the initial steps of their startup companies. There are a few things. Take a look at our Martin Trust Center. We do have, um, you know, entrepreneurship and innovation built into our curriculum, if that's something that you're interested in. There's also a, um, a finance class that's for entrepreneurs, so you really can get some of those supports and that information through our curriculum. In addition to that, we have a number of clubs and organizations that are working in all of these different spaces. Well, whether we're talking about startup general support, um, we have some simulators, we have some accelerators, we have all types of resources available. Um, we also do have different types of, of cross-functional support. So depending on what type of space you're looking to get into, whether we're talking about tech, we're talking about sustainability, we're talking about um, finance, all of those different um, industries are available for you to connect with other people about. There's a question about the flexibility in taking a track. So maybe you could speak on um, once you're committed to a track or a certification, what that would look like, or if somebody decides to not do the track afterward. Definitely. So, so uniquely at MIT, in MIT Sloan's MBA program, you do not have to declare your tracker certificate. So the, the idea is that you'd select the classes you'd like if you're interested in in having that distinction. So let's say you start out thinking you're going to go for a specific track or certificate, you take two or three of the classes and then you decide you really want to open your curriculum back up, that is of course okay with us. Um, so you have a lot of uh, academic support through this process, but it is a way to sort of really still keep that idea that you get to move through this curriculum with a lot of choice. And so that, that it would be the way to handle any of that. You know, we understand that students come in thinking one way and they could take one class, they could talk to one person and their, their view might change, um, their path might change. So, so that's, 
sort of assumed that that could happen. So for those of you on this call, also something else to consider, we probably have about half of our students coming in with a pretty clear picture of what they want and where they're going and it, the type of job they hope to get out of their MBA. And then we have a lot of students that that pivot well, well in the MBA program. We have a lot of students coming in hoping to, to try something new and to do something different. So either path is acceptable and is something that we're prepared for here at, at MIT. Thank you so much for all your questions. These are wonderful. We do accept online GRE or GMAT scores. So for those of you who may be in regions where you cannot make it to a testing center, we do have the, um, we do accept online scores for, from the GRE or GMAT if that is available in your region. We have a few questions about how competitive or like the percentage of folks that get in in our last round of applications. Um, so I don't know if you can speak on something along those lines. Definitely. So, so it's hard. I would say that every year our numbers change with how many students apply and are admitted into each round. Um, so I can't give a specific percentage there. But what I will say is that it's in line with the same percentage of applications versus students admitted as the other two rounds. But it just varies. I think that, you know, there's a lot of opportunity here, especially with what's going on, that each candidate will be considered and given, you know, the full opportunity to to, to have a seat in this class, um, but but the percentages are a little bit tricky, so it's it's not as straightforward as that. Um, I do want to talk to a few of you on the call that are mentioning that you applied in round two, um, and so now you're awaiting interview invitations and so for those of you who are on the call that are awaiting interview invitations some a few things to consider so the way that it works is that after your application is reviewed several times by by our admissions committee some of those students are invited to interview with us so it is a 30 minute interview and it's a behavioral interview and so our admissions committee is looking for the way that you work with teams examples of some of your successes um, you know to really bring your experience and your abilities off of the paper and explain to us what you're what you're doing and what you're hoping to do um, so there will be some questions that are prepared for you based on your application and then there will be time in the end for you to ask any questions that you may have um, and so this really does give us a chance to get to know you your communication style how you work in teams so as you're thinking about preparing for an interview those are a few things the way that it works is that you are sent an email inviting you to interview and then you are given the chance to schedule your interview so you can select the day and time within the window to to um be interviewed by a member of our admissions committee. There is just one quick question about the difference between our, our two-year MBA and then our Sloan Fellows MBA. So our two-year traditional MBA is a larger group and the biggest difference is the years of experience those students are coming in with. So as I said, our traditional MBA program has about five years on average of experience. Our Sloan Fellows has a, a, about 15, 10 to 15 years of experience there. Um, so it's just something to consider as you're thinking which, which program makes the most sense for you. It really is based on, on your level of experience with professional full-time work, work. We, our campus is open, so I, I realize this is a virtual information session, but campus is open. Um, our students, are, our prospective students are more than welcome to, to come visit us. And so we'll make sure at the end, we'll share in the chat a link for our upcoming in-person visits, if that's something that you're interested in doing. Um, 
um, a, uh, some questions more about our letter of recommendation. So our le the letter of recommendation, as we as I mentioned, we're looking for one letter of recommendation. And that letter of recommendation, as I said, it, we're hoping it's from someone that really does work with you on a regular basis. We do ask very specific questions about your experience and some of your successes. And so we're looking for the, this recommender to write to that. Um, you know, we see, receive a lot of strong recommendations with a lot of um, adjectives that, that describe how great our candidates are. But if you can remind them, we're looking for very specific examples to show us that work success. A, quite, a great question, and I touched on this a little bit, but I can come back to this about, you know, how the campus culture is different at Sloan versus other business schools. You know, I think what you can expect in, in a business school is that a lot of the business schools will talk about, you know, their collaboration, their curriculum, their faculty, right? So all of those things exist here um, and are strong at, at MIT Sloan. I think that, you know, what's really unique about the MBA sort of culture is, is sort of that our students are not competing with one another. Our clubs and organizations are, you know, you if you raise your hand, you're you're welcome to join. The more the merrier. Um, it really is a collaborative, a truly collaborative environment where I hear stories all the time of a student telling someone, "Hey, I'm interested in this," and three months later they get an email saying, "Would you like to join? Um, we're working on this startup that's in in your interest area." Um, so it's it happens really organically. Um, you know, at, from the start as soon as our students arrive. There's also a question here about what has changed in our curriculum since, since last year. So I'll answer this a little bit generally, um, but I think that, you know, the the class size on, you know, on average against our peers, our class size is much smaller and that gives our faculty and our staff and our students a lot of abilities to work together to determine if something needs to be done, if um, a new interest area is not covered. Um, so we have you know, a lot of rise of interest in impact investing, for example. Um, and so we're seeing courses being added to meet the, the interest level of our students. So it's something to consider. Um, you know, I I don't think there are major changes within the curriculum or the way that we're handling the MBA uh, classes and admissions process, but we're also always seeing new additions, um, topic areas that are now becoming of interest, um, coding, for example, um, all these types of things are going to continue to be more and more important for our business professionals. And so we're able to adapt and be nimble in, in some of our course op offerings to make sure it matches what the industry is looking for. And that also means that it's, you know, an open communication between our students our, and our faculty and staff to make sure that we're, that we're able to meet those needs. Thank you again for all of your questions. I'm just scanning here. I still see some questions about, you know, your years of experience versus your grades. Um, you know, something to consider is that if you are on the, the higher side of experience and you have eight to 10 years of experience and you have your transcript that's in the background, it was a long time ago and you don't feel like it's representative of your skills, we also understand that. So again, as I mentioned, we're not looking for one particular thing in a candidate. We're really looking for the big picture of who you are and your successes. So I think that would not be a reason to deter you from applying. Um, another question about um, having a formal job. So we do ask that our students step away from their profession during the two-year MBA. Um, and so that means that many students are quitting and leaving their positions to join the MBA class. Um, all of our curriculum is in person and is during the day. And so it, it wouldn't be possible for our, for our students to work while receiving their MBA. So just something to consider.
there is a question here about attending Sloan with your family. So our our Sloan community is very open. Um, you know, our significant others and children are welcome to essentially attend everything at Sloan except for the classes. So if you if you would be moving to Cambridge and bringing your family with you, there will be opportunities to have everyone involved in the MIT community. That's part of it. There will be some support that once our students are accepted can receive to help you with that transition, um, you know, ideas, opportunities, ways to sort of navigate that move. So there are, we do have a lot of support um, with bringing our MBA students here and making sure that um, the family is able to make that move if that's something that you're interested in. This is a more general question, but how does the school encourage collaboration among students? And so what you can expect is when our students arrive, what happens is they're broken up into these larger groups. We call them oceans because they're named after different bodies of water. And so those groups can be between anywhere from 50 to 70 students. So it's a, an offset of your MBA class and you're paired in an ocean. Those oceans, you know, host different events, different social events. Um, there's an Olympics where the oceans compete against each other in the spring semester um, when you can be outside. So it's good, fun competition. Um, we see our alumni really still presenting themselves at, at dinners with what ocean they were a part of because it's a sense of pride and a sense of community. So those oceans are your initial um, grouping in pe with people you can get to know quickly and easily. And then within those oceans, you're broken into those smaller core teams, which is six to seven students. And as I mentioned, move through your core classes together. So you're working on all of your assignments together and you're really starting to get to know each other. And so that idea of collaboration and, and teamwork is start, it, it begins as soon as our students arrive. And so that gives our students really this greater sense of community and being a part of something bigger. Um, and then that type of involvement really expands the experience. So your core teams are also paired with second year MBAs. So you can ask advice, you know, what they just went through their first year, what do they wish they knew. Um, and so really, it's built in as part of the community to find ways to get to know each other and collaborate. Okay, just give me a second here. Unfortunately, uh, PhD programs do not count towards the full time um, work experience minimum. So just something to consider for the most part that that counts as academic experience and would not count as full time work experience, though I know that you're working, you know, full time. Age and level of experience is not a disadvantage in any way. Um, it just would mean that sometimes our admissions committee helps our students figure out which program makes the most sense for them. Um, so, you know, not everyone's story is exactly the same. And so we really would look at your, your history and your experience to help you determine if there was any reason um, that we, we get someone on the higher number of years of experience for the MBA program. Our admissions committee may give you a call and have a conversation about which program makes the most sense for you. So it's not a disadvantage. It's just something that, you know, we would help you determine if it makes sense and which program is the right fit for you. We can't, we do have students that apply to both the MBA and the Sloan Fellows program at the same time. So that is a possibility as well, if you're not sure, sure which program makes the most sense. This is a good question. You know, how does the program and admissions committee define student success? And are, are there any new specializations or courses currently under development? So the first question is how, how do we determine a student success? There's a number of ways. Um, we look at the rigor of the classes that you took. We look at the grades that you received. Um, we will look at, you know, the projects, any projects that you've accomplished in um, school as a student. So we're looking at this in a number of different ways. Um, so it's just something to consider when you're thinking about that. Um, and right now, 
I think, you know, as I said, the focus on incorporating impact investing um, is, is the move this year and we'll see what's, what's next to come. All right, do my, does my team see any other questions that I haven't gotten to yet? I think you've covered most of the topics, thanks. Okay, great. All right, wonderful. Thank you all so much for joining us. I really am appreciative of, of you sharing your time with us. Here are a few of our contact information. If there was a question we didn't get to, you can email, email us here, check out our website. There are a ton of resources listed there. And on behalf of the MIT Sloan Admissions Committee, we're excited to see your application and we're excited to talk to you about all that we have here at MIT. Thank you so much.